Hi, I'm Neil from Sonar. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Sonar Cube on Windows. The system I'm going to be using has Windows 10, but any 64 bit version of Windows should work just fine. Before installing Sonar Cube, there are some prerequisites that need to be downloaded, installed, and set up if they're not. The first is Java. You can always find the required version of Java for the version of Sonar Cube that you're using from here. With the current long-term support version, 9.9, .9, as well as any Sonar Cube version 10, you'll see that the required version of Java is JDK 17. You can use either Oracle JDK or OpenJDK. I've already installed Oracle JDK 17. After installing, you can verify that Java is installed and it's the correct version by opening up a command prompt and running Java Dash version. You'll want to make sure that the Java version shown is in fact the version you were expecting, in this case, Java 17. Once Java is set up, you'll also need to make sure you have a database set up. You can see the supported databases are listed under the versions of Java, and you can see that with this version, we support Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. For this installation, I'm going to be using SQL Server. Now, I've already gone in and configured my SQL Server, but for each database, you're going to want to refer to the installing the database section of the installation instructions. For any database, you're going to want to create a schema and SonarCube user. It's also recommended to create a SonarCube database within that specific database platform. You'll need to make sure that the user you've created has create, update, and delete permissions within that schema and database. For each database, there are specific instructions that you'll also need to make sure you follow. As I said, I'm using SQL Server, so that specifically says I need to make sure I'm using a collation that's case sensitive and accent sensitive, as well as setting the read committed snapshot. I can show you within SQL Server Management Studio that I've created a SonarCube database that I'm going to be using, as well as creating a SonarCube user within this that has write permissions to this database as well as creating a sonar cube schema within this database that, again, this user has permission to write with. Once that's all set up, now you're ready to download and set up sonar cube. You can download sonar cube by going here. This will always show you the latest version of sonar cube, and you can pick which edition you would want to download. Additionally, if you prefer the long-term support version, you can scroll down on this page, and you can see the long-term support here, you can pick which edition you would want, and then select Download. For this download, though, we're going to be using version 10.1, the current latest release, and the Developer Edition. So I can click here to download that. This is going to download the Sonar Cube installation zip file. The zip file will need to be extracted into whatever directory you want Sonar Cube installed. I'm going to pick the root C directory. You can pick whichever directory is appropriate for your installation. And then extract. You can now see that I have Sonar Cube extracted into my root C directory. If I go in here, this is my installation directory. This is where all of the files for Sonar Cube are located. Before we start Sonar Cube, we're going to need to go into the conf directory and configure Sonar Cube to use the database that we've set up. The sonar.properties is where you would configure any parameters that you want to specific to your Sonar Cube instance. All of the Sonar Cube parameters are available within here, but most of them are going to be commented out with a pound sign. So to use them, we're going to need to remove the pound sign as well as setting the values appropriately. The first two that we're going to need to use are the Sonar JDBC username and password. And these are going to be set up with the username and password that is created for your specific Sonar Cube user in the database that you've set up. Now you can see that we have different parameters available depending on which database you're using. As I said, I'm using SQL Server, and specifically I'm using SQL Server with SQL authentication. So I can use this URL, and I want to set this specific to my host and my database. Now, if you're using SQL Server, most of the new versions will use SSL by default. 
which means that there are some additional parameters that you'll need to set to connect via SSO. Specifically, the encrypt equals true, trust server certificate, and host name and certificate parameters as appropriate. Once you've set all these, you can save this file, and now you're ready to start SonarCube. To start SonarCube, you can open up a command prompt, go to the installation directory, and in here, you'll see there's a bin directory. Go into the bin directory, and we can see that there's specifically a directory for Windows. So we go in there, and we see the startsonar.bat. This file is what we're going to want to use to start SonarCube. Now, the first time you run Sonar, it's going to connect to the database and see that the appropriate tables have not been created. So it's going to need to create those tables, which will take a little bit longer starting up then than it will on subsequent startups of SonarCube. You'll know that SonarCube is ready once you see the line SonarCube is operational in your console. So with that, we can now access the SonarCube through our browser. By default, SonarCube is going to be installed on port 9000, so I can go to localhost 9000, and we're presented with the login page. The default username and password you can find in the installation guide. The default username is admin. I'll put in the password, and the first time we log in, we're going to be presented with the screen to change our password. So I want to update the password. And now we're into SonarCube. If you are using the Community Edition, then that's it. You've had SonarCube set up and you are ready to start scanning code. However, if you're using a commercial version like I am with the Developer Edition, it's going to need a license for you to use this. So it's going to provide you with the link how to install the license. You'll see here that there is a server ID. You'll need to copy this server ID and send this to your account representative. With that, they'll be able to give you a license key. Once you have your license key, you can enter that here and SonarCube will be ready for use. There are some additional steps that you should take if you're going to be using SonarCube in a production environment. You can see those in the installation instructions under the operating the server. The first step would be setting this up as a service. Here you can see the instructions for how to start this as a service. Additionally, if you wanted to secure your server and use an HTTP proxy, there's instructions for that down here under securing the server. This is highly recommended if you're using a virtual machine running on the cloud, such as through Azure or AWS. There's also additional instructions for configuring other properties within SonarCube within the documentation. Now, if you have any problems while running SonarCube, it would be advised that you go to your installation directory and go into the logs directory. And in here, you'll see all of the logs that SonarCube generates while it's running. The first two places that you should probably look would be the sonar.log and the web.log. Most of the issues that you'll run into, you will see logging for those here. Now that you've finished setting up your SonarCube instance, you're ready to start scanning your code. There are wizards available when you first log in to configure SonarCube with a variety of DevOps platforms or to scan code manually. These wizards will take you through the steps of how to scan and analyze your code. Once you've created your first project and you attempt to create other projects, these wizards will also be available to once again connect to the code and allow you to scan that. Thank you for taking the time to set up SonarCube with me.